What's up, everybody? Today, we're going to cover USACO 2018's January contest at the silver level. Problem number one, lifeguards. Let's read it. Farmer John has opened a swimming pool for his cows, figuring it will help them relax and produce more milk. To ensure safety, he hires N cows as lifeguards, each of which will have a shift, each of which has a shift that covers some contiguous interval of time during the day. Okay, so we have some number of cows. Uh, we don't know how many. And each cow is going to have one interval that is continuous that they will be working as lifeguards. Okay. Um, for simplicity, the pool is open from time zero until time one billion. One billion is great. That means we don't have to use longs. We should be fine with integers. Um, on a daily basis, so that each shift can be described by two integers. The given time at which a cow starts and ends her shift. Okay, so for example, this could be like three to six o'clock and then that shift would be described three to six. That cow will only work one shift. Every cow will only work one shift and we have some N number of cows. Um, each cow will have one continuous shift. Um, for example, a lifeguard starting at time T equals four and ending at time T equals seven covers three units of time. Okay, so if it was four to seven, let's just make this four to seven, four to seven, then they have four to five, five to six, and six to seven, three units of time. Unfortunately, Farmer John hired one more lifeguard than he has the funds to support. Given that he must fire exactly one lifeguard, what is the maximum amount of time that can still be covered by the shifts of the remaining lifeguards? An interval of time is covered if at least one lifeguard is present. Okay, so we've got all these uh, cows up here that are working as lifeguards. They have overlapping shifts, potentially overlapping shifts. We're not guaranteed of any overlap, um, but potentially overlapping shifts. They have different start and end times. And we need to figure out if we were to fire one of them, what is the most time we could still have covered? So for example, if we were to fire this first cow right here, then this time right here would no longer be covered. If we were to fire this second cow right here, then this time right here would no longer be covered. If we were to fire this third cow here, then this time here would no longer be covered. We're looking for the cow essentially that has the smallest amount of time that is, is they're the only one that is, is covering such that firing them would have the smallest amount of time that would become no longer covered. Uh, anytime where there's two cows working, we could fire either one of those cows and that time would still be covered. Um, all right, let's look at the input format. Input format is coming from a file, lifeguards.in, so you'll have to make a file reader. The first line contains n, which is from one to, there's that 10 to the fifth again, which means we, we can't use an n squared algorithm. Um, we have to do at least n log n or a linear algorithm. Um, so that's n, in this case, three. Each of the next n, line describe, n lines describes a lifeguard in terms of two integers in the range of zero to one billion giving the starting and ending point of the lifeguard shift. So for example, this cow works from five to nine. All such endpoints are distinct. Shifts of different lifeguards might overlap. Um, again, might overlap, not necessarily guaranteed overlap. Output format, we have to write out to lifeguards.out. Please write a single number giving the maximum amount of time that can still be covered if Farmer John files, fires one lifeguard. Okay, so our goal is to take these overlapping intervals and figure out if we were to fire a cow, what amount of time would still be covered? Um, and if you have paper and pencil on your desk, now would be a good time to try and work through this and see if you can figure out just generally how to solve the problem. Um, uh, it's a good time to pause the video. Uh, after that, come on back and we'll, uh, we'll figure this out. On the floor. I'm gonna do from five to nine. And then... That actually wouldn't overlap. This would be like three to seven. Three to seven. And then look here. It's not exactly to scale. Five to nine. Okay. All righty. So in this example case, we have three cows, one of them working from five to nine, one of them working from one to four, and one of them working from three to seven. Uh, as you can see, the one to four and the five to nine have no overlap. The three to seven overlaps with both of those cows. Now, if we just kind of eyeball this, Looking at this first cow, this first cow has from one o'clock till three o'clock that they're the only one covering. So if you were to fire this cow, you would have minus three. Um, there'd be three hours that would no longer be covered. Um, this cow here has from seven to nine where they're the only one working. So if we were to fire that cow, um, we would have minus two. There'd be two hours that, that, cow's, that, that no cow is covering. Um, this third cow down here, 
the only time that they are working alone is from four to five. Um, so if we have them four to five, then if we were to fire them, that's minus one hour. So just kind of looking at it visually, we can determine that the cow that we wanna fire is going to be the uh, three to seven cow. The three to seven cow only has one hour where they are the only cow that is working. Um, the other cows have, have larger periods of time where they are working alone. So how to approach this from an algorithmic standpoint? Um, my recommendation, and there's a lot of ways to approach this, but what we need to do is we need to keep track of at any given time, who is working. We also need a way to not have to count through the seconds one by one. We saw up here, this is 1 billion seconds. Um, 1 billion seconds, which is uh, 10 to the ninth, this is a very large number to try to do linearly. Um, even though N is only uh, up to 100,000, the temperature range, or sorry, the, the hour range is very high. So we can't count through one hour at a time and then look through to see what cows are working during that time. That's gonna be too large. So we need a way to jump. Um, and there's a lot of, of simulations that are gonna be solved this way, where jumping forward through time is necessary in order to cover the entire time, time gap. Um, so the way this one's gonna work is we're gonna take, uh, I'm gonna back up here. We're gonna take all of these uh, starting and ending points as if they were separate events. Um, so for example, if I were to label this cow as cow A, this cow is cow B, this cow is cow C, and then just to share the labels, that's A, C, and B. Then essentially my key points in time are defined by these two numbers for each cow. Um, I'm just gonna write them as a number and then a letter. Um, so we're gonna say uh, uh, we have five A, that's when A begins work. We have nine A, that's when A stops work. We have one B, which is when the second cow starts work. We have four B, which is when the second cow stops work. We have three C, which is when the third cow starts. And we have seven C, which is when the third cow stops. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sort all these. And when you do this from a coding standpoint, um, if you're working on Python, you might wanna use tuples. Uh, C++, you might wanna use pairs. Um, if you're working with Java, you may wanna create a custom data type for this. Um, or you could do a, like an array list of array lists or something to that effect. Um, so if I were to sort all these, then the first event is 1B, that's B starting work. Second event is gonna be 3C, that's the C starting work. And we can kind of, as we go through left to right, you can see this is one st uh, B starting work. This is C starting work right here. Um, after that, we're gonna have uh, B4, that's B ending work. Then we're gonna have, uh, looks like A5, A starting work, C7, uh, C ending work, that's A5 and C7. And finally, A9, that's A ending work. Once we get these sorted, we now know what the events are, are occurring uh, from start to finish in the order that they're occurring. Now, what we're gonna wanna do, I'm gonna erase this so we can have some space to write here. Um, so essentially what we're gonna do is we have all these events and we have them sorted now in the order that they occurred. What we wanna do is we're gonna have some sort of a container keeping track of what cows are working currently. Um, I'm gonna label this one working. We also need to know what is the total time covered? And we also need to know what are the cows that are working alone? Cow A, how many, how many hours have they worked alone? B, zero, C, zero. So a couple things we have to keep track of. We keep, have to keep track of the total time. Actually, I'm gonna do, um, let's do total over here rather than like that. Okay, so my working cows are gonna go in this box on the left. And then on the right side here, I'm gonna write for each cow, how many hours they worked alone together with the total number of hours worked. So I'm gonna start processing these uh, just straight through in a linear fashion. So I've got one B. Encountering the letter B, I check to C, cause I don't know for sure if this is starting or stopping work, but that's what this working box is about. I check to see if B is in that working box. If B was in that working box, then that would mean that they had previously been found and this is the end of their shift. Because of the fact that B is not in this working box, it means this is the first time we've encountered B. So we're gonna add B to the working box. Um, we also need to keep track of the last event, last event. So now the last event occurred at time one. So at time one, we have B working, B got put into the working box. So far, none of the cows have worked alone. We then advance through our loop. We get to three C. Now, upon advancing from time one to time three, we already know that our last time was one. We know that our current time is three. Um, so we know that two hours have passed. We check our waiting box and we see that there's only one cow working. 
what that means is that means that cal B has just worked for two hours alone. So we're gonna update B to be two hours. We also know that because there's at least one cow in this working box, that means that two total hours have been covered as well. So we're gonna update our total to two as well. So what we're gonna do as we work our way through here is we're going to be keeping track of our working cows together with when they worked alone and the total hours worked. So now that we've fully updated that, we're gonna update our last time to three. And we're gonna add C to our working box. So just up to here, let's kind of retrace what we just did. We had B start working. At that moment, no cows were working, but now B is in the working box. We then advanced to when C starts working. We saw that two hours have passed. Because of the fact B was alone in the working box, we added two hours to B's time. We also added two hours to the total amount of time that was covered. We updated our last variable to three, and now we are ready to advance to the next, um, to the next step. Um, so next step is gonna be B4. Okay, so the time is equal to four. We check our time. Last time was three, current time is four. It means we had one hour elapsed. There's at least one cow in the working box, which means that's one more total hour that was worked. We're gonna update our total hours to three. But we can see that there were two cows working, so no cow was working alone. Um, this was, let me just kind of generally redraw this here. This was cow, uh, this is cow B, this is cow C, this is cow A. So we've covered the two hours that B was working alone. Right now we're on the part where B and C are working together. Um, okay, uh, so we have uh, B and C working together. We are not gonna count that as any cow working alone, but it does count as a total hour that was worked. That was one hour where they both were working. Since we've encountered B, that means B is no longer working because B was in the working box, but we encountered a second B. That's the second B, this is the first one. And the second one means that B has to get removed from our working box, which means now C is the only cow working. And now we're at this, this stage right here where C is gonna be working alone. Um, we advance to the next time. Uh, our last time has to be updated to four here because we've removed B. All right, we advance our next time. Our next time is A5. Now, because A is not in the working box, that means A is gonna start working. When we look in our working box, we see that one cow is working and that's cow C. The time elapsed from four to five is one hour, which means that was one hour of C working alone. So we're gonna write that down for C. Um, that one hour of C working alone also adds to the total. So now we have had a total of four hours worked. Um, the last time we saw is now gonna be time five. Um, and we're gonna add A to our working box. So this is now this part right here where A has begun to work. Um, uh, A starts work, we advance to the next time. Next time is gonna be C7. That indicates C stopping work. From A5 to C7, that's a total of two hours, five to seven is two. We're gonna update our last time to seven. We have two hours worked, which means our total worked hours are gonna go up from four to six. And then because neither of those cows was working alone, that was A and C working together, we don't add any alone time. But because this is a C that we've just encountered and C was working, that means that's the end of C's shift. So we're gonna remove C from our working box. So our time is up to seven. That's our last time up to seven. Currently A is the only cow working. Um, we are now beginning this last step right here, starting from here when C stops working, we're gonna hit this last part where A is working. So far, B has worked alone for two hours, C has worked alone for one hour, and we've had seven total hours, uh, six total hours worked. Uh, all right, we take our final step to the A9. Since time used to be seven and we're now at time nine, we have two hours that have passed. The two hours that have passed, we check our working box. A was the only cow working. So we have to mark that down as A having two hours worked. And because at least one cow was in the working box, we're gonna add two hours to the total hours worked bringing us to eight total hours worked. That will bring us to the very end here after A9, and you can see we're at the very end of this bar right here. So we've finished, uh, last time is nine, uh, and we're not gonna use it, but might as well update it. Okay, so let's look at the info, oh, and then we have to remove A from the working box. We reach the very end of our list here. We can see that no cows are working. Um, and what we've compiled here is, oops, is this information over here, which shows how long was each cow working alone and what were the total amount of time that was covered? So when we look at this, we can check A, B, and C. We can see that the cow that worked the amount of time alone, the least amount of time alone was cow C. Cow C has a total of one hour that they worked alone, which means if we were to fire cow C, then we would lose one hour of coverage because cow C was the only cow working at that time. 
we also can see that our total is eight. So we take our total, we subtract whatever the minimum amount of time is that a cow worked for. And what we're left with is the output. So just to kind of quickly rehash that one more time, um, essentially what you're trying to do is you're getting all of your events, five, nine, one, four, three, seven. You need some way to connect each of those to the cow. So you've got 5A, 9A, uh, 1B, 4B, 3C, and then 7C. Didn't leave myself a lot of room there. Um, 1B, 3C, 4B, you get them sorted in terms of time. Three, four, five, six, yep. Process them from left to right. Every time you encounter a cow that's not working, you mark that it starts working. Every time you advance, if there's only one cow working, make sure you record that as a loan time for them in some sort of a, maybe a dictionary structure or something like that. An array would probably be fine as long as you have some way to convert. Um, if you did pairs of integers, for example, instead of using ABC, you could use its, its uh, index in an array um, or, or something to that effect. Um, but essentially every time you, you encounter a letter, if it's in your working box already, that means that cow just stopped working. If it's not in your working box, it means you have to add it. And then every time you advance, if there's only one cow in the working box, you count that as alone time for them. And additionally, as long as there is at least one cow in the working box, you add that to the total time that was being covered. Once you finish, you figure out which cow was uh, worked alone for the least amount of time. And however much that time was, you're gonna subtract that from your total time worked and that'll give you the remaining amount of covered time. Alrighty, good luck coding it. And I'll talk to you on the next one.